Welcome back to the homestead. I am Jacob from Sustainably Yours, and uh, well, we're at the end of August, and I still need to get my two Shed Wars videos for the month out. Um, it's been a crazy whirlwind of a month, and I'm lagging behind on the YouTubes, because the real world gets in the way sometimes, unfortunately. But here is where we're at on <laughs> Shed Wars. The garden is empty now. Well, for now. Except for we still have some tomatoes going. We'll probably harvest a few tomatoes that the bugs haven't gotten to. But um, it's not going to be empty for long. I've got some carrots planted here for the fall. I have two rows of cosmic purple carrots. Two rows, well, a row and three quarters of... I cannot remember the kind of carrot this one was. It was one of the, the small carrots. They, they, they stay short, but they get a little plump. And then I have a row of, maybe a row and a half of Amarillo carrots. From here over to, I don't know, about right there or so, we have sugar beets planted. We're going to try to harvest these sugar beets and attempt to make our own sugar. Why are we gonna attempt to make our own sugar, you ask? Just for fun. I know that we could go to the store and buy sugar for a, a fraction of the cost of what it's gonna take to grow some sugar beets and produce sh some sugar. As a matter of fact, we're probably not gonna get very much sugar out of it, but it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be an experiment, and who knows, one of these days we may not be able to just go out to the store and get sugar, and at that point, it would be nice to know how to do it. Unfortunately, as far as Shed Wars goes, I don't think any of this stuff is going to be ready in time to harvest and count toward our Shed Wars total. But that doesn't mean that we are completely finished for the season. For one thing, I've still got all of these sunflowers that I need to harvest. And it's a bunch. So we're going to be able to get lots of sunflower seeds. They should be harvested in time to count. We're still getting eggs from our chickens, so we'll be able to count those. I'm also getting ready to hatch another round of quail eggs. Once I get some more quail eggs hatched, well, let me wait for this genius here. Big rock truck driving 60. Hear it? Trying to get slowed down for the big curve. Genius. Anyway, sorry. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, once I get some more quail eggs hatched, I'm going to start harvesting a few of the quail that we have. And it'll just be a few at first, but that should happen in plenty of time to count toward the shed wars. And also, I'm noticing out here in the garden, it's hard to make out what it is because the ground has been recently tilled and it's pretty soft. But you can probably see the, the animal tracks. Yeah. We have a deer that's been hanging around the homestead. And it has made my list! And I think, I'm going to have to check the dates, but I think our deer season is going to just slightly overlap the shed war season, so I may be able to harvest a deer before all is said and done. So like I said, all of this stuff's gonna be fall, winter crop. Um, I'm about to sow some kale seeds all in here. Um, I've got some rutabaga seeds that I'm gonna, let's see, I've got some bok choy and some baby bok choy that I plan on trying to, to plant out. We've got some red beet seeds. We might may throw a few of those down. I may even try a few more green beans and some peas. I don't know. I'm going to dig through this box and see what all we can find. There are the kale seeds. These are kale seeds that um, I saved from last year's kale. So we'll see how those work out. What's this? Oh, yeah, that's the... Um, these are for next year. Those were those Charente melons. Those were really good cantaloupes, man. I know I've got some mustard greens. Now there's some uh, some radishes. And somewhere in here I have some rutabaga. I'm going to try growing some rutabaga for the first time ever. I was just walking through and I think, I think, I think, this might be one of my sugar beets. Then I've got, looks like some more. 
here and there. I hope, I hope those are my sugar beets. There, oh man, this is where my squash was. So looks like we may have some volunteer squash trying to pop up here. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully those are sugar beets. Although I did have some radishes growing somewhere in this vicinity. So maybe it's radish, I don't know. Yeah, and I also happened across this little guy. Those things are so hard to get video of. This is a velvet ant, or as they are commonly known in some places, a cow killer ant. Now they get bigger than this, quite a bit bigger, actually. But these have one of the most painful stings in the insect world. And while it looks like an ant, and it is called a velvet ant, it is actually a wingless, solitary wasp. Enjoy your day, little velvet ant. But let's go ahead and plant some kale. I have the, the ground here, it's dry right now. I'm hoping that we're gonna get some rain here in the next couple of days. The, the hurricane, I think it's Ida, is moving its way up in kind of toward this direction. It's gonna, uh, from what it looks like, the hurricane is gonna kind of curve away from us. So we're gonna be on the outside of the storm. I'm hoping we'll get a little bit of rain from it so that I don't have to lug water out here. But the ground is, uh, is pretty loose. So I'm just gonna take my kale seeds and I'm gonna just hand broadcast them in this little area, if I can get the bag open. So I'm just gonna kind of reach in and grab oh, a little bit of a, of a handful. And I'm gonna throw them, I'm gonna kind of sidearm them a little bit, and I'm gonna try to throw it with enough velocity that when the seed hits the ground, it kind of bites into that loose dirt a little bit and plants itself. And I just seeded an area that was about, I stepped it off, it was about 30 feet long by about 10 foot wide. So 300 square foot of kale and all of those seeds came from two different plants that I grew from last year that I overwintered them. And they went to seed and I collected all those seeds from two plants. I've said it before. That rock truck again or one of them. I've said it before and I'll say it again, that is why I love heirloom seeds because you can hold on to them and you can replant them out again the next year. And from just a few plants, you'll get way more seeds than you'll possibly be able to use. Another case in point, my sunflowers. I think the, the first year we grew these sunflowers, uh, let's see, we grew about 10 or 12 plants. We had 10 or 12 sunflowers. And from those 10 or 12 sunflowers, I've got this entire patch. And now, <laughs> look at how many flowers I have and imagine how many seeds are going to come off of all of these flowers. If you're interested in prepping, if you're interested in self-sufficiency, um, sustainability, survival gardening, heirloom seeds are the way to go. In this little spot here, I have one row, well, almost two rows of Bloomsburg spinach goes down that way and then it comes back. And we got to about right here on the second row. I've got, I don't know, four or five feet of space left. So I have just a few of these purple top rutabaga seeds left over. So I'm gonna plant them here. And I'm gonna put it in this video because when it comes up later on and I'm thinking, what in the world is that? I'll be able to come back and remember. And now, right next to the sugar beets, I have some lettuce. I have two rows of iceberg lettuce and then two rows of buttercrunch lettuce. Both of these are heirloom varieties, so 
maybe I'll be able to collect some seeds next summer. And that's going to do it for this evening. I still have a lot of space to plant if I want to, if I can find the stuff to put here. I've got about 15 feet of space here, 15 foot wide by, I don't know, 30 or so foot long. I've got this area here, another probably 15 foot wide by, I don't know, 20 feet long. And then I haven't even touched this. We've got lots of space to work with. So if we decide to do a Shed Wars extended season, I'll be up for that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. And then you can click on one of these right here for more daily sustainable living.